in ban. Oh, All G's fun. turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant <sighs> team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds oh. remaining. G's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Uh, Radiant I'm team old. ban. <laughs> OG's turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Uh. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Oh, geez, turn to pick. Bang. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> yeah, good to be back. Nice little break there. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Ancient apparition. Hmm. Yeah, I was actually even expecting it to be picked up there just because of how good it is. And it's... Not even just exclusively because of that combo with getting the free souls, but Shadowfiend by himself is just a standout hero the, with the raise buff. It seems to be a premier pick for mid. can build him a number of different ways, too, um, dependent on the, the team that you're up against. But it's going to be an Ancient Apparition to go with the Clock. Clock can either go off lane or four position. I like four position with AA. That's a pretty strong duo, if you ask me. Clock really good against Bane, stopping all his spells. Has really no escape and probably won't get a four staff anytime soon. Shan King, pretty good hero in response to the clockwork though, as he can have a, has an easy way to get out of the cogs and get out of range of that battery assault. Radiant team ban.
Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, not to mention, not to mention potential language barriers. I don't know how how much English um, all of Payne speaks. I know King R speaks pretty fluent English, but he's the only one that I know that can. Uh, I'm sure maybe the other ones can say you know some important things, but um, that's that's always a little issue. I've never been in that kind of position, so I don't I can't speak fully to that. But sure, it, it's got to be a little bit of a hindrance, I would imagine. But um, also, do you know who he's replacing? I know that uh, 40R used to play for Pain, and he was like a star. Mid he was an amazing mid player. I don't know if he was still on that on this roster or what what the deal was. But do you know anything about that? Five seconds remaining. Radiant team ban. Huh, okay. Well, 40R must have just left the team then, but he, I think he used to play for this team, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh... <laughs> well, he was on this team for... I mean, this team has been relatively consistent with their players, I, I should say, for for a while. But uh, I remember if... if and it doesn't really matter, because he's not playing, but 40R played an amazing Lena when Lena had a different talent set. Just, uh, I can't remember which tournament was. I want to say it was a major, but he just took over a game. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. Maybe that was who I'm thinking of this whole time. I could be totally wrong. I'm probably really wrong. I'm an idiot. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's neither here nor there because he's not even playing this game. But anyway, uh, bands come out. Tinker, Medusa. Yo, Shadow Phoenix ban actually does come out. And Enigma coming out for OG. So, see some potential black holes. There's couple different ways to stop it, but uh, obviously, you know, I was talking about this earlier, he's much more of a hero than just his, his black hole. He has a lot more to offer. Can uh, deny his own lane, deny experience from the carry. Just uh, His talents are also some of the best in the entire game. I mean, he's got some amazing talents. A hero that naturally goes Midas for, I think it's a 15% cooldown reduction. It's insane. Not to mention one of the longest but best cooldown ultimates in the game with black hole will get reduced now because of his talent. Um, the Eidolon buffs, not only are they faster, but they do like, I think it's plus 70 damage or something insane. And then if you get to level 25, you have like 10 Eidolons before they split. It's just, it's nuts. I wonder if, you know what would be kind of cool is if they picked like a Rubik, like and put the Sand King in the offlane. Nope, they're not going to do that. They're going to go for Doom. Another way to cancel the uh, Enigma ulti through BKB. So you're going to have to look towards maybe something like a Lincoln's in the mid to late game, if you can get that kind of farm. So it's going to be a more safe Doom, probably in the offlane. Sand King as their four. You can go either or, actually. You can go Doom as a four and roam around Sand King as the offlane. They have that flexibility. Right. Yep. I am the only thing that worries me a little bit about Doom is that like right now you have two heroes that just have absolutely no escape to a clock hook cogs. And not to mention if you are in cogs, you are dead. Like if you get hooked in cogs, they have multiple ways of like ancient apparition, even without the ice blast, 
just putting cold feet on top of you with battery assault was probably enough to kill either one of these heroes, namely Doom or Bane. Sand King's okay, but these the other two heroes are just they get caught with clock cogs. They're they're in a big problem. So Doom's not a hero that you buy four staff on really ever. Bane you could, but just finding the farm is going to be the problem. So that's one thing worrisome for me in terms of Pain Gaming's draft already. Radiant team pick. Very good with Ancient Apparition. Gives them the opportunity to go aggro if they want to. Which is good in all stages of the game. Very solid hero. It's really hard to find flaws with, with Chaos Knight. Um, it really is. I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to grasp for them. I just can't find them. It's a very strong hero all, all around. And it just pairs nicely with Ancient Apparition. Especially the fact that he already hits hard. And now that it doesn't slow your attack, it's easier to kind of get that off quicker. So it's just a really, really nice uh, hero to go with a draft. Gives him, again, flexibility in the lanes. Terrorblade. Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. Just winning games lately, man. I, I just keep... Like I said, I mean, last game, Siler had a very rocky start and did some kind of weird things in terms of his rotations when his... You know, trying to fight when Meta was down, things like that, when he was already so underfarmed. But, it, I mean, a couple good fights here and there, and that hero just takes over. So, a very high win rate in, in official games, I sh I, I'll say, uh, as of late anyway. <laughs> Scary Meepo game against uh, the AoE... You know, Ancient Apparition, Enigma, and Clock. Be kind of scary. Five seconds remaining. <laughs> the thing is, is OG has so much flexibility right now in their lanes. Like they could even do a dual lane Chaos Knight mid if they wanted. If they really wanted to shut down something mid. Like AACK mid, if they really wanted to, and we've been seeing a lot more Terrorblades mid. So keep that in mind. Like, you know, Terrorblade, if they, they're probably thinking, oh no, CK AA aggro with maybe Clock roaming around, that could be really detrimental to us in the safe lane for Terrorblade. So what have we seen the last two, at least the last two games I've seen Terrorblade throw him mid. It's a lot difficult, a lot more hard to shut him down if he's in that mid lane. So with the Bane helping him out, Sand King roaming around. So right now this last pick I feel has to be something that can like move around or. Like, again, flexibility in the lane, so... Just off the top of my head, like, Weaver or something like that. Puck. So, uh, Puck is also flexible. Can lane in a number of different places, so... I like that last pick to round things off for Pain. I think that's a smart one. It's also just a generally good hero. Silence is coiled multiple ways to stop that black hole, even before BKB comes out for Enigma, so... And, and just gets rid of illusions quickly, too, with the spam. Five seconds remaining. Interested, I'm interested to see the uh, Zeus ban. It's funny because I'm always in the boat where I'm like, Zeus is such a good hero against Terrorblade, but no one ever picks up Zeus. Like, it never happens. But it's funny that King RD acknowledges that, hey, we need to get rid of Zeus because he's so good against Terrorblade, yet I still don't think OG would have picked him because I never see people pick him. But anyway, they finish things off with a C or sorry, a DK. They got DK and CK. <laughs> and it's going to be uh, Mad playing that. So he will be... That's a really cool shield, by the way. That is. Wow. That's different. Tons there's of some... cool shields. On, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there's some badass skins in general in this game. Well, they're winning sense. the game. They got the cool skins. They're winning. Ah, well, that Terrorblade wants it. This Terrorblade's even cooler than the last one. It's yeah, really it's really flashy. Cool. This Doom skin is not impressive at all. No, that's looks pretty, <laughs> pretty bare. <laughs> looks he's, pretty he needs to... King RD, and I'm d that, I mean, King RD, you, you know that he's bought plenty of cosmetics, so that's, <laughs> so, that's a So, speaking of the Doom, and it looks like it... It will be a Doom 4, not a Doom offlane, um, which I like better be for the reason being, if, if it's Doom offlane, that means more far farm priority. 
And I just think that Doom's gonna have actually some trouble, like, getting, not only getting off his spells, but I think he's just gonna feed a lot, quite honestly. Like, if Clock has a good game, they have lots of stuns and ways of keeping him down. So I think it's better, it's better to give the Sand King more farm priority, um, knowing mm -hmm. that Doom might have a bit more of a difficult time. Just as long as Doom gets his ult off, it's pretty much the most important thing. Doesn't matter whether you're a 4 or a 3. I, I like this decision making by, uh, by Pain. Who does Doom ulti? Like, what's his focus this game, you think? Um, well, you definitely want to ulti CK before he ults. That's, like, number one priority, if you can. Um, do you have multiple ways to stop the black hole until he gets, like, a BKB? Then it has to be the Fiend's Grip or the Doom. So you're looking at that. Um, but outside of that, you, you definitely want to Doom that CK before he ults. Yeah. Do a target King RD. Decides to look for resolution, by the way. He's playing the CK. So we'll be uh, effing that on the... DK, yeah, that, that is gonna be annoying. Try to say Dragonite. Yeah, I'll just try to say them in full. Anyway, so G four heroes down here at the bottom lane. They're gonna zone them out, and looks like they're gonna steal the bounty ring down here. And it should still be a two-two split unless Clockwork can do something crafty. Your axe, nope. I'll just put a ward down, get some vision in their jungle. Shout out to Jerex, by the way. I'm gonna do some sellout for him. He just launched his own website. You can buy his <laughs> own merchandise. Like shirts and stuff. Oh, this clock is gonna jack this rune, I think. Speaking of oh. Jerex. Yeah, and he gets the pushback. So, well played. yeah, nice new rune snatch. That's gonna be three to one in favor of OG. I'm interested by, uh, oh, I was like, okay, is we going mid with these items? But this makes a lot more sense. So, it's actually gonna be a mid Sand King, believe it or not. It's gonna be Puck in the offlane. Deal with this potential, uh, tri lane for C Kane. But nope, that tri lane is mid right now. Tavo is gonna feel a little bit of the pain. <laughs> Speaking of pain. What is happening? Is this first blood even? Tom, no, I mean, he has got Burl Strike. Out. Okay, so he's good. But what? what? A tri lane mid versus a <laughs> solo Sand King yeah. for the time well, being? The reason is uh, Puck just doesn't... is not that great of a matchup against DK. Like, DK will get all the last hits. Puck can't really kill DK. No stun available, unfortunately, for Tavo. As he does uh, get in a maybe? little weird spot. Yeah, he's gonna have to... just salve right now, but... A couple more seconds, he'll be able to. But also, when Sand King gets his levels, and once it's kind of stabilizes for him, Caustic is very, very good against melee heroes, so they're hoping to get that kind of matchup against melee hero. And... Okay. Really funky start there, but yeah, Fly, Engine Apparition, he's makes it, he makes his way all the way to the top lane, and going to be paired up with Resolution up here, of course, so we playing essentially an offlane puck now, with how things have shaped up. Of course, we uh, former teammates of Keizu earlier on in the season as well. That's another storyline with that uh, mid or feed team that didn't do too well. <laughs> and uh, they, they kind of fell apart pretty quickly. Weeha, he's in a little bit of trouble. This is your of course, John. He's fine. Taking some good damage, but pops a salve. He'll be good. So Clockwork moving to the top lane now and going to try to uh, keep addressing the puck. Prevent him from getting anything going. It's smart by Bane by just ignoring the lane because you can't stabilize just normally by harassing and getting lane equilibrium you have to use it through uh pulling and connecting against a denier like enigma so he's actually going to walk up try to grab this but i don't think he's going to get it yet because he was just a little bit too late but he'll get level two after this next bounty the lane actually will be in a pretty okay spot or pain i think he's gonna have to pull it again another deny coming out they could maybe go here actually they have meta plus he slept an idol on, or did he sleep him and then he toggle it instantly? Am I missing something? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> did he open with a sleep on idol on? It looked like he did. Or it is like he so did. fast that I could have sworn he slept the idol on to start, but maybe I'm seeing things. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. No. It looked like it did. So we'll we'll go ahead and say <laughs> that. But anyway, see, he's fine. Support the top lane though. Fly's not fine. That's gonna be a first blood. Doom coming in. He took over the Hellbear Smasher and Thunderclap used. Assist with the Puck, of course, and Puck actually even gets credit for the kill. So well played. Bottom lane, sleep on Enigma. Derek's he'll TP in and just throw some cogs down. Gotta help out Keizu a little bit. But yeah, first blood in favor of Paint Gaming. Looks like King RD up here is doing a bit of work as I say that, though. Out goes Ancient Apparition using that uh, the chilling touch. However, it's still not going to be enough for turn damage on Doom. As he actually took over the Seder now, so he has an unholy aura. Oh, that's even better. And if you look at mid, like after it stabilized, like I said, Tavo's actually just—he's going to continue to crush this lane. 
He's already up to 20 CS. It's very difficult for DK to kind of stand here. And this damage is magic, I believe. So it's not like his extra armor is really going to help him. Obviously, the regen's nice, but... Oh, nice pushback from Jerex. Gonna have to stun out. Waiting for a second. Waiting for a couple mm. seconds, actually. Taking a lot of ex extra damage, but... Yeah. He's good. Of course, no Dragon Tail just yet on... On, uh, Mad, so... Boy, they were getting that kill in the end, unless a big misplay from the Sand King, really, so... But yeah, he's doing fantastic. You're right, 24-1 and one now. I mean, it's not like DK's struggling, though. He's pretty much up there with them, but... Yeah. Davo, get in, get in, essentially, free farm now at this point. Puck is struggling, however. It's kind of talked about how they wanted a favorable match for the Sand King, but it's not like Puck's doing much better and has had to deal with plenty of supports being up there, though. Yeah. The top. Arcane Rune on Doom. Go. Doom is walking towards bottom, but this will get scouted out. So this will be a, a tip for Keizu to play back a little bit. Good vision here from the supports of uh, OG. But yeah, I mean, imagine Sand King up in the top lane, though. Like, mid would be kind of a wash. It would be won by DK. Maybe Puck gets, maybe they just kind of trade farm, but this way Sand King gets, you know, complete free farm, basically, unless he gets ganked. Well, that's not happening right now, just yet. HFN also at the bottom lane. Seems like he's doing pretty good. 22 and 10 CS. You know, having to deal with the idol on denies, of course, of Keizu, but overall, right. not doing too shabby. Top lane? Puck eh, has an orb. Do they have the lockdown for this? They might. They do. No! It did not last long enough. All right. Chaos nice getaway. Ball. Drops his null, uses his stick, and he's basically up to full HP. And then has the unholy aura, of course, so he's going to be... Oh, nice, and they nice. get this D-Ward. It's good experience, too. That gets him up to level 4. Yeah, the, the D-Wards early on are very big, too, because that experience is no joke. You you really shoot up in levels. Yeah, he's level 4 right now. Of course, uh, Enigma is a little bit better, and that's just naturally how the hero works. And right now, uh -oh. Enigma's jungling. The middle lane. Blockwork. He's slept. <laughs> In the midst of his own cogs, and now here comes Dune, the Breathe Fire, trying to mitigate some damage, if anything, but Jerex, no chance. Yeah, it was a nice idea, because right Gustavo just used his stun, but fortunately when he ran in with the cogs, Bane was ready, and he didn't use Battery Assault before he got slept, so... Even though he trapped in the Bane, oh! Ulti, come in with a stun from Effing Mad. But doesn't have enough with his Soul Ring, it's on cooldown for four more seconds, so... He will not get the kill on Tavo, so... We'll see if he can make anything use of this ult. Um, doesn't look like he's going to push it anytime soon in the mid lane, because that siege creep is pretty healthy, so... It could be a wasted ult, unfortunately. There's a nice scan from Dire, though. Yeah. They have no vision up there, and so they will scout out, or at least know that Doom is in the area, or someone is in the area. Exactly, and pretty good idea that it's probably Doom. He's been up here a couple times already, so... Jerax again um, in mid. Jerax again. <laughs> See, this is like the fourth time. <laughs> oh, oh, this no, time he... he doesn't get over, and he is going to die. No Sandstorm. Has to stand his ground, you know, yeah. Thought for sure. I guess the fourth time is a charm, though. For all the times that he waited so long to stun out, that time he did it immediately, and uh, he just bounced back right back, so... No figure. Metaform from Terrorblade bottom lane. is dealing with some Eidolons, but... You see Keizu is currently back at base using the Eidolons to prevent this push from happening, though. Giving up a little bit of CS because of that, but overall, keeping t damage off the tower, which... You know, it's, it's pretty good, especially with that Metaform active currently, so... Making his way back to the bottom lane, but here comes the Creep Push, and the Metaform's still active. For a bit longer, there's even the Fortification. They really want to prevent as much damage as possible on this bottom tower. They, yeah. They need to be careful not to overcommit down here. Metaform is cool is uh, not going to last for much longer, and they're not sure of the vision that OG have there. So they're a little bit apprehensive to actually dive the tower, and they only have two members, so... Speaking of vision, I mean, OG's got a lot of vision down here. Not in the traditional spots, either, so... <clears throat> the OG's wards, yeah, one at the Bounty Rune spot, and one kind of on their own side as well. Double vision in that river area. Um, I was noticing some item builds. Let's talk about uh, Dragonite first. How the previous series mentioned that he went the Shadow Blade earlier on the Siler Planet for right. Thunder. This time, he's going the Armlet after the Soul Ring and Power Treads. What do you think hmm. of this game? Hmm, I don't know. Armlet's a... I mean, Armlet overall is just a great item. It's a little iffy against Doom, so you have to be careful about not activating. Although I, I saw a thread talking about, like, ways you can stop that by dropping it or putting it in your backpack or whatever, but... Which would be funny to see if that comes into play here. But it is something you have to worry about a little bit. 
Well, he's... This game, because of how important his uh, a blink is and how important his stun is, I, I would imagine he gets a blink after. Um, Shadow Blade's good if you rush it, and he's certainly not going to rush it. Let's hold that thought. King RD gets taken down by Fly. Fly's got some good levels on top of him, too. It's not Book hasn't even come out yet. Eight minutes, and he's uh, nearly up to level six. Pretty good for the five support. Yeah. That was obviously Clockwork coming in, though, setting up the cogs and locking him in. Fly just having to get credit for the kill, but yeah, some, some decent farm himself. And he's able to work off another Elder Dragon form from DK here in the middle lane. Just use it. Ooh, they smoke up, and he was not saying good job hiding next to the trees. And they're going to go to the bottom lane, it looks like. Maybe try to find the kill on Terror Blade. They do have a black hole on Keizu, of course, so they probably want to try to use this, especially to get the core kill. That Let's would be if, worth it. See if any kind of scans come out here from um, the more time that they're not showing in mid. See, so right now, DK, yeah. yeah, they're pinging. Like, ping, ping, no one's mid. Careful bottom. <laughs> I don't see a scan come out, so we'll see if he... Bites this here. He's playing around. He's playing him. around the tower, and now they see him. Yeah, good awareness there from uh, from Pain Gaming. <clears throat> he is good. Yeah, HFN was playing it pretty safe, despite no scans coming out. And to be fair, it was on cooldown. Okay. On their there side from earlier, so. Uh, but yeah, played it very safe. They had the information, and thus he's fine. But yeah, Black Hole is one of those abilities that you do want to try to make use of earlier on in the game if you can, especially for a core kill, as mentioned. So it's understandable the OG win for that, but. And just a better response from Pain Gaming, so a little bit of wasted time, especially on the Dragonite side of things. Again, he had the Elder Dragon form active during that too, so... Essentially almost kind of a wasted cooldown of sorts. Because of that. How's the Sand King looking? He went tra or he went uh, Tranquil Boots into Soul Ring. 1500 gold saved up as well. I, obviously he's farming very well, so this is going to be a really early blink on the Sand King. Yeah, and he's rushing it. Like, uh, we've seen this trend of going for the... The um, sorry, the drums first, but I really like this. I just I'm I'm more of a fan of rushing blink, and he's not necessarily rushing it like like you said. He's getting some build up items in the soul ring and stick, so he still has some decent stats. Um, but he's also at the same time going to surprise them with a relatively early blink. So I, I really like this build from Tavo. Speaking of nice level sixes to pick up, Dream Coil's ready for Puck as he's just now level six and a half. They mentioned that there could be some action up here. He has pulled. Oh, juking it. Goes for the shift. Gonna jaunt away. Doom is activated on a Chaos Knight. He doesn't even have his Phantasm. Wouldn't be able to use it anyways by trying to get away now. Clockwork slept at the tower. Jarek's going the other direction. He's just gonna be bait. And he'll die. The Doom, he gets denied at least. But still, Resolution is dead for a good yeah. 25 plus seconds now. So still a victory for Pain Gaming, no doubt. Honestly, that deny was made possible by, believe it or not, Clockwork. That Clockwork came around. He did die, but he, his cog stopped the uh, the Puck from walking back in time to get the coil off. Puck was oh. trying to run up and get the coil to stop uh, the Doom CK from running around. But uh, Clockwork kind of saved his life. Tower goes down. No last hit, unfortunately, for the Eidolons and Keizu. But uh, still, nonetheless, gold for the team and some map control as well. Here comes Jerax, a little speedy with those... Uh, with those uh, tranquil boots as well, just running around and being annoying, <laughs> it seems. Yeah, it's a, Clockwork's good at that. He doesn't even use his battery assault there. Figures it's not necessary. But yeah, how about Enigma? The Hand of Midas picked up, of course. He's got another thousand gold saved up. He's almost level ten up there with the top levels in the game. So Keizu, especially with that tower kill as well, looking pretty good. But as I say that, he's in trouble. There's that Dream Coil, Inferno Blade Auto Attack, Easy Pearl Strike, and sorry, Keizu. Should have yep, stopped hyping you well, up right if these, there. If these feed as well, it's going to be a lot of gold. All the Eidolons, another 100 gold or so. so. Hmm. And that's the Blink Dagger. 12-minute Blink Dagger with Soul Ring and Magic Wand. He did not use the Epicenter. and would be surprised to see a smoke come out, perhaps. Maybe on that Courier as well. Uh, no smoke on the Courier. No smoke on the Bane. So, looks like they won't be smoking, but they will have the Blink ready to go. You do think about it in hindsight, I mean, Nigma was pretty far up right there with very little to no vision in that jungle, so almost a bit of a miscue, you could say, yeah. on his part. Middle lane, speaking of that, Matt's pushing this military, he really wants it, but at what oh, cost? Whoa. A hook shot going right through the uprights. Some of them miss the armlet taco, though, for Matt, keeping him alive for a little bit of duration, and it's not going to be enough. He eventually will get taken out. King RD finishes the job, but that was funky. How did that I, not hit anybody? Hey, he's doing his best Blair Walsh impression, that's all I got to say. <laughs> no one anyone watches football. That. Nobody watches football, probably. But anyway, <laughs> I did. I Do you know what I'm talking about? That. Yes, of course. The worst kicker in the history of the Seahawks and Vike. All right. Anyway, uh, Jerox. <laughs> speaking of falls, Weehaw gets a with a nice timely veil there. 
But yeah, that, that hook shot was really off the mark, and I don't, I don't know if he was, was trying to go for... It was one of those, like, he tried to hit so many, and because of that, he just yeah. ended up whiffing. <laughs> it's like one of those awkward moments. Uh, this, I mean, with the metaphor, do they really want to fight this? No other dragon form. They do have an ice blast, I guess. They do have a black hole as well, but he's pushing bottom lane, so... Pushing bottom, no blink as well, so his initiation is pretty much just stand there and hopefully let me walk up and do it. Um... But yeah, so nice armor toggling though I have to say from Mad. Wasn't enough unfortunately for him. And yeah, it's cool to see, or I should say it's interesting to see a variance of item builds for Terrorblade. We see Yasha sometimes up. Oh, King RD gets taken out with an ult from Resolution. But that's some, you know, measly 220 gold. It's really not that much. Tavo in the meantime gets a pick off on to Jerax right there. So Jerax, that's his fourth death. And I was going to say, too, that initiation from the Blink Sand King onto DK, that should have been telegraphed because he was literally attacking creeps with his Blink Dagger that just got brought out to him. So they should have been like, ping, 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 he has Blink. And uh, he just, unfortunately, oh. DK just stood there auto-attacking and got caught. Top lane, level 2 epicenter, Blink Dagger. Mm. He also has a double damage yep. rune. This would be a good fight. It's a very good fight. Here we go. I'm expecting Soul that Ring channel. Epi. Any second, nope. there we go, the Sol Ring Epi, Resolution, he's gonna get caught, the Doom goes up, no Pearl Strike just yet, gonna wait, he missed the DK, they will get the CK though, as the Ice Blast even comes through the Fiend Grips, locking down Dragonite, Mad's also in trouble, can maybe Armatago out of this somehow, he's going for the turn kill on Doom for the time being, gonna be hit by the Inferno Blade, the Armatago's not gonna work, he goes down sinking, blinks over to the Ancient Apparition as the Cold Feet procs on a Bane to take him out, but now Fly in trouble too, Tavo wants to chase, Cold Feet will proc however, and that will keep Fly alive. In the meantime, can he get the stun out? Now? Oh, nice! <laughs> the hookshot used to save him, and I believe it did. Would have been close with that stun. Meantime, Enigma does deny mid tower. Jerex, not gonna have enough damage here. And actually, Tavo's running in. He's got a four stick. Won't be enough for a stun. And his soul ring's cooling down in eight seconds. So goes Jerex. He is relatively low. Tavo, I don't know if they know that resolution's here. A four second stun. <laughs> And that's going to be a dead Sand King. He stayed way too long. The jabated yeah. from Jerax. That was big jabate for sure. Uh, it's, it's understandable why Sand King was tempted there, but yeah, he did not know Resolution was coming in at all. Very well played. Okay, so fun fight back and forth at the top lane, but again, meanwhile, Keizu's been having a very solo-esque game. Pushing a lot of the bottom lane, farming up the, di or the Radiant Jungle even. As a result, he... Oh, you know what? He's switching it up. He got the Ogre Axe even, was going the BKB, and I was going to talk about that, but now he's switching yeah. it to a Blink Dagger. Yeah, I wouldn't have liked Dead. the BKB rush. I think Blink is just so much better. Just makes you... I mean, he's staying by himself a lot, but... His... Other, without the Blink, is just basically stand there, hopefully Clock gets a hook, and they stand there and wait for me to come Black Hole. And even then, they have two different ways to stop it through BKB, so... I think having that... Even just Blink initiation with Malefice, like outside of the ulti... Oh, he, Again, oh, it's a lot of gold. That's like yeah. more than Broodlings. Of course, there's not as many, but still some very, very good gold there for Wii. Speaking of, has his Blink Dagger in about 200 gold. Play from earlier. And once again, a recap how that uh, top lane went with the initiation up there. But yeah, KZ having the Blink now at least. And it goes back to, so d does he get the BKB now? Do you still think it's good, even though they do yeah. have technically a stopper? Yeah, you still get right. BKB. Like, you wait for Doom to be used, and Fiend's Grip will, you know, you got to hope to use that too, or have them use that too. So it, it is a little awkward still, but you still need the BKB. I mean, there's Sand King and Puck. Like, those, these heroes, you ha even without casting the black, the, uh, black Hole for the whole duration, like, you still need that BKB to just move around and fight, so mm -hmm. it's still necessary. Top lane, OG moving in, smoked up, Resolution. Got the Echo Saber to go with his own armlet, of course. Gonna find at least Bane, and Clockwork Hook shots in on Tavo. So Bane is 100% dead off the bat. Drinkle hits multiple heroes on both of the cores. Terrorblade, he pops a metaphor, beating down Jerex. Doom is activated onto the Chaos Knight. Doom does fall as a result of that, but the Black Hole in the back lets catches two, including Terrorblade. And the Puck, Puck with a face show, trying to get out of there. Ain't gonna work. She goes down two, and a four for one fight in favor of OG. That smoke was real. Now make it a four for two, as Tavo does it does take out the, uh, the Chaos Knight, actually. But will it come at a cost for him? Burl striking one and a blink coming up. He should be fine. Should be. Oh, never he mind. He got too greedy with that. He definitely had both things up. Stuns out on the top. 
No TP, but maybe he can get away. Now, as he should be fine. There is a TP coming in from Clock. Again, he needs to be careful not to be too greedy, but... Yeah, unfortunately, no Sunder there available. Um, nice black hole on two members. Sanky wasn't able to use his Epi as he was there towards the end, and... He was a little apprehensive because, yes, they do have vision, and speaking of, Duster comes in and is up that vision that they have. Yeah, so the, he got initiated on, so he played very defensive pretty much that whole fight. But even though CK cast the ultimate, it was a nice Doom onto the correct uh, CK illusion. So Doom, even though he died and CK got his ulti off, he was still able to be effective with his ult. Yeah. Top lane. Yeah, he was coming through. Beat him out. Uh, Possibly do something with Clock no. here. No. They have Epicenter. Maybe he wants to go here, but there's actually a ward down right on top of them, so they know what's up. You see Sand King making use of that farm. By the way, they're a courier dead currently. Did die in that last exchange, so waiting for that to come back up in just over a minute. But he has a Yules now in the works, and that's actually just about finished now, so Tavo continues very good farm. Terrorblade, haven't really looked at his items too much yet, but again, Dragon Lance into the into the Manta style is actually yep. going to be finished here. Heads over to the shop. Very fast farm. Stand in here, grab a uh, bounty rune, then he'll ha he'll have his uh, Manta. Oh, I hear a hook shot top, but nothing doing. Well, he was just getting away at that point. <laughs> oh, okay. Literally a defensive hook shot. Yeah, I guess he saw Bane coming in, wrapping around and. He did not want to mess with that. He's oh. still not out of the woods yet. All right, right so they know that OG knows they have vision there as he's trying to deward that ward right there. AA okay. Blast coming in onto HFN, but no one's TPing in, so he should be fine. Glyph is going to be a bit annoying. TP's oh. coming in. Doom out onto Dragon Knight with his armlet on, mind you, so his health is draining like crazy. Mouth is coming out. No black hole, though. I was wondering if he's going to go for the cast, but as you mentioned, didn't have an epicenter off to the side. The resolution gets caught. Phantasm at the last second. He is so low on life, though, and the Illusory Europe helps snipe him out. We get credit for the kill. 3 nothing right now in favor of Peen Gaming in this fight. As Kizu and Jerex will have to walk away, but Wii's not going to let them. Has that veil as well. Pops it on a Jerex. Illusory Orb? No, he's not going to use it. That's it's a little bit too deep. The tier 1 tower is even still up, but... Yeah, that all started by catching DK in the first place. Right. Yeah, that, that Doom damage on top of the armlet, when it's already activated, just rips, like, rips through his HP. It's insane. So, to answer your question, uh, you asked a long time ago, I don't, I don't know if that necessarily is the, uh, the best first item there for DK. He does have the blink, which is nice, but some uh, big plays happening here for, for Pain Gaming. Coil is up now in one second. Obviously, Doom's on cooldown, but they... They, they can fight a lot. Like, they don't necessarily need this Doom to always fight. Like, they Coil's low low cooldown. They can just keep using Sand King stuns. It was a really nice Fiend's Grip, on, Fiend's grip onto the uh, CK. Tried to cast his ult, but it was way too late. Mm-hmm. Black Cole is ready. BKB's almost finished. He needs, like, 200 gold to finish it, but they're going to smoke up right here. He could just Midas and grab it, actually. I'm surprised they're not, like, waiting for him. It's a big item to have. Especially with no Doom up, no Fiend's Grip as well. Although Fiend's Crypt is cooling down in 10 seconds. Blink's done, coming out onto Puck. Puck is dead. Got greed, uh, got uh, jipated by the DD room. <laughs> uh, did he end up using it too? Yeah, he did, didn't he? He doesn't have a bottle, so... Yeah, he used it. Wasted there, but at least he took it away from them, I guess, as they go into the Roshan pit. And now Resolution's here. That should make it a lot quicker. Buyback is ready on Puck. Didn't nice really want to commit to a buyback. Really nice vision here from OG. Hook coming out onto Bane. Bane's in trouble. He's dead. Black Cole nice is not going to use it away. against him, but the four staff will save him, so by dead, I mean not dead. Yeah. But it's going to be a... Man, I don't want to say free Roshan, because it's they're still not sure. Yeah, OG's oh, very Sanking timid. Is caught. They would like to kill Tavo. He's going to Black Hole for this. Nope. Going to finish him out. Malpha stuns being used. The yields in the air. Ice Blast on top of him. He got the blink off. Oh, my God. Is he actually going to escape? Jerex will pick off Bane, but another fight breaking out over here. Again, Black Hole is ready to go. Jerex getting low. Doom running in. Has that Doom to use, but is unable to find the target currently. As Puck, they found somebody. That's the Dragon Knight. He's trying to stay alive off to the side. Doom for the armlet toggle, but he got caught in no man's land. Yeah. Tavo is playing out of his mind, dude. This guy is a master of escaping. 
This is crazy. Just I, I can't believe he actually got that blink off, despite yeah. uh I think he still did he had AA blast on him or something? I don't know, he had a lot of dots and things on him and he yules up and was able, still able to quickly click click quickly click that blink. That's hard to say. Well the the Yule, or the ice blast hit him right as he blinked, coming down right. from the Yules. That's what made it pretty crazy, but yeah, and then the forest staff over the ledge. Great escape and uh, that's safe to say, uh, DK just got a little bit of tunnel vision there. Really wanted that kill, and... Yeah. Bites him in the ass. And CK's going straight for a heart, which I, I would have much preferred the blink, just for another, um, initiation tool. Works really, really nicely with your ultimate, Tavo. Playing with fire again, but... He's, uh, fainted death once, and tw once or twice, so... We'll be fine. He's actually really close to his level 3 ultimate, too. I'll take that. Having a hell of a gain on the Sand King. Yeah, he really is. He's, he's the top level in the game, in fact, at 17. You mentioned just about 18, so... Higher than his teammate Terraplade, who's now working on, I'm guessing, an Eye of Scotty. As he has another ultimate orb here. Of course, it'll be kind of the routine follow-up. Talked about the Black Hole's been ready for Enigma for a while. They saw him have the BKB, I'm pretty sure, as well. So, again, it's... Unless I'm missing something... Hookshot. Pretty sure... What is that? Middle lane? Okay. Derek's Catch us King RD. Ice Blast is gonna come through, and it will connect. But it's too fast, drums especially. Malphus on Casey went pretty deep there, but no return. Ooh, if if oh, Bane was ready, you could have just turned around with the Fiend's grip with Clockhook being down. Yeah. Not an easy way to cancel it outside of the DK blinking himself in, so. No harm, no foul. Goes back and forth. But these back and forth exchanges, I think, favor T the team with TB. It was really just getting uninter uninterrupted farm. Closing in on that Scotty. Take a look at that Tavo escape once again. And yeah, DK tunnel vision for him and eventually gets him killed in the end. Remember Roshan, he, he was softened up a little bit. He's, he's regenerated most of that life, so. Smoking around. Look, I don't know if they saw. They shouldn't have because they didn't have vision, but Clockwork might break the smoke. It's actually, oh, they know he just rocketed. They know he's near. Even just a quick pick off without any, using any big spells oh. is going to be huge. <laughs> yeah, no big spells used and he tries to actually hook away. <laughs> no buyback. Nice little pick off there with that smoke. Made it as easy as possible to kill him there. And un unfortunate even. For Jerex as he walks right into that trap. Chaos Knight, you mentioned the heart. It's just about finished now for him. Just needs the one more Vitality Booster at least. But now it's now it's Pain Gaming's turn to attempt to used. That's a meta. They want this Roshan now for themselves. Tavo, he's got the level 3 episode. He's going to be jumped initially, but he got the Sandstorm off as well, so I guess they had a sentry down. Oh, there's a big blink stun opportunity. Here comes the ultimate from Resolution. Doom up on to Keizu. That's No big. black hole for a long time. And obviously they know this. They're not going to try to finish off Roshan, though. Epicenter hits Chaos Knight with the Burrow Strike. He goes over the Reality Red. Phantasm was already used. The Fiends can block him now for sure. And he will be taken out. Dragon Knight able to take off the Doom off to the side, but he's going to be slept now. Nobody's able to take that off. Can Fly maybe get that off for him? No, he's not going to take it off. In fact, be the full duration. But now the Doom has worn off. The Black Hole's still ready. They know this. So, yeah, good retreat from Pain Gaming right there. I heard a Great hook. start with the Doom, though. I think he hooked his teammate, though. I think Doesn't he matter, did, but they I... still catch Tavo. Yeah, big triple kill here for Mad. As unfortunately, the epicenter damage was nice and CK died, but it was really only on that CK. So despite having tons of AoE damage with that and using the Doom onto the Enigma, as you should, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, they just weren't able to get enough damage spread out, and it was only focused onto the CK. Finally, OG will take the Roshan. That sounds like a five-minute Roshan fight, it felt like. Yeah. Constantly doing it over and over again, but DK, Dragon Knight, is the one to pick up the Aegis. After all of that. Yeah, I guess both DK and, and CK, <laughs> uh, you know, they, they have their, their big ultimates, and it's like, where it, it, the Elder Dragon, for if you activate that and you die shortly after with it, then, you know, it makes the Aegis not as strong, I guess, so. Yeah. yeah that, the CK Phantasm, when you've already popped that, if you happen to die and they're still up, like it's not as big of a deal, I guess. So, but sure. The, so, what do you think about the Dragon Knight getting it? Getting the BKB? The no, I'm sorry, the Aegis. I'm oh well, I think there. it's. I th I think they would have liked CK to get it, but I think he was still dead, and they were just taking Roche, so it was just a matter of proximity. But okay. um, I think the, uh, the Chaos Knight's gonna have a bigger problem because he doesn't have BKB, and yeah, you have a heart and. Give your illusions to fight for you, but most of the time he's gonna have his illusions near him, 
And if they kill him, it has to be through huge AoE spells from Puck and Sand King. So those illusions are going to die anyway if they win that team fight. So mm -hmm. I don't think his illusions are going to be too much of a factor if they can go on him and kill him. Um, he does have the heart, so he's obviously a lot more tanky and his illusions deal a lot more damage. And he's actually got the blink queued up next, but I would not be surprised and I think it would be good for him to go for a BKB as well on CK. It's not something you feel good about doing, but I mean... You see Sand King and Puck on the opposite team, it's like, especially when the Sand King is this farmed as a core, like, it seems kind of paramount to me. Mm -hmm. Doom has the speed aura currently <laughs> from his Devat. I don't know if I've really ever seen that much coming out. That with the score shirts, he's running well over 500 move speed, actually, or just over, I should say. Which is uh, damn fast <laughs> when he has that. Um... Anyways, the rest of his team is pushing the top lane, so again, Doom's not here, but they have a Terra Blade with Metaform ready. I have Scotty's been purchased. And gonna deal plenty of damage to this tier 2. Bottom lane, they'll be in counter push, so it's, it's a trade, it looks like. And we're gonna actually end up seeing right here. I like this item choice by Puck, by the way. wonder if you agree, the, the Ag's coming out. 100%, yep. Very, very good item choice. Yeah. Especially against the DK having BKB, like, being, being able to make him stay there, or break him if he decides to run out. It's going to do a lot of damage. I think it does It does a ton now after they've changed things. 700 break damage. It's a lot, yeah. A lot in a four and a half second stun. Alright, so they do trade the tier two towers. Let me see Chaos Knights back to defend. He now is going for the blink himself, so finish the heart. Wants to get more of an initiation with the team. Gonna have a yep. blink. DK has one, obviously Enigma has one, you got the hook shot, so once he gets it especially, they're going to have initiation across the board. Yeah, I'm really surprised he, he didn't go for that first. Um, I, that's what you typically see is the armlet, Echo Saber, Blink, but... Went for the heart. Had the money. Puck, being elusive as ever, his Blink's out right there. But yeah, that'll be nice when he gets to the Acceptor. He's pretty close, just needs about 1,200 gold or so. And uh, King Artie, of hmm. course, does have the uh, blink, which is always nice. Now, Keizu is very, very close to his uh, Lincolns. In fact, speaking of... Gee, we have a smoke aggressively coming into the base. They want to use this Aegis. They want to use their big spells. We might break one or two. But will he see them is the question. He does, because there's a ward. Yep. Oh. It's the four illusions with the Phantasm. If they could just back without anything, this is huge. Oh, very nicely played. They don't risk it, they don't try to get cocky, they're just like, let him waste his ultimate, let's go farm. Let him waste out this Aegis, let him waste out his, uh, his Phantasm, and we'll farm the other sides of the map. Really nicely played. <clears throat> Great retreat from Pain Gaming. Game remains very close, in a matter of a thousand net worth lead or so, in fact the graph, yeah, the, the most lead we've had this game. And now uh, 31 minutes is just barely 3,000, if that. That was in yeah. favor of OG earlier and on, so. And that was all made possible by this ward that Payne has in their own jungle. Like, Puck could, would have still broken that smoke, but he wouldn't have had any idea that they were there. So, that Double ward lane. was really winning it for him. Weezing nice double stun. Quill. Double stun on top of that. Matt is here, though. BKB going to be Pop Fiend's grip on a Sand King. Oh, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. It looked like it was on him, actually. <laughs> but uh, it's actually Duster trying to survive in the backlands. A black hole on a solo Sand King. You really want that kill, Kaze. It's like it's better than nothing. It doesn't get the kill initially. Finally does. DK does go down. The Aegis going to bring it back up. Now you see Chaos Knight. The Doom on him. Obviously didn't even have the Phantasm at that point, but he'll fall shortly after. The Metaform of Terra Blade just tearing through everyone of OG, including both of the cores and DK and CK. And they are dead with no buyback right now. Yeah. When you have an uncounterable black hole, you cannot afford to use it on a Sand King. This, you, especially when there's a Terra Blade with double damage. Obviously, I don't think he knew he had double damage, but Terra Blade in general. Like, you, you need to get more heroes. It, it's They cannot counter it unless they've already cast Doom on you to break it, which they he will he will not do. And you have the Fiend's Grip ready, so you just can't afford to use that, that spell when it's uncounterable like that. You, HFN uses the Sunder on his Illusion to gain some HP. That's going to be a set of racks, it looks like, and both cores down. No buyback. Here comes some initiation. They know they want to fight. Oh, no. Yeah, that's going to be Jerex dead now as well. He doesn't have a buyback, so at least the top racks. Do they go for more? I mean, terribly? No, he, he does not want it. He's actually going to import out. Going to lose the Doom, who got too overcommitted, and that will be the end of the, of the push. But plenty of damage done by Pain Gaming, of course. Doing back to about a 3,000 net worth lead themselves, but more importantly, the racks up top do end up falling. We is going to be able to complete the, the Ags now, which we stressed how important Ivan that's going to be this game. 
Uh, Terrorblade is well on his way to a butterfly as well. Yeah, Another and I like to see it. that he actually went through with a full Hurricane Pike. I just see so many Terrorblades just leave the Dragonlance, but... I mean, in my opinion, Hur Hurricane Pike, for its for its cost and what it does, is the best item in the game. It gets so cheap, gives you a free four staff, an upgraded boost of stats from the Dragonlance to the full Pike. And it's just really, really nice item to have in general. So he actually goes for that, and like you said, closing in on his butterfly too. Be very, very scary for OG, but yeah, they can't, I just... The next fight, they they need to have a, a, a bigger black hole, I think. And not to mention, CK mm -hmm. just got caught, I mean, like you said, he didn't have Phantasm, yet he still was running in as if he did, and uh, just got dealt with in a matter of seconds. Yeah, OG seemed a little not on point in that previous fight, but but most certainly got to give credit to Pain Gaming. Looked very good themselves, and that net worth is starting to grow more and more now. CK got the blink, and as mentioned before, he too is going to be working on the Lincolns, which tends to be a pretty popular item in this game, apparently. Plenty of single target, and even things like the Burl Strike that it will be good against. Doom itself, of course, is very useful. And I know you were talking about that earlier in the case of the Enigma, at least, so. Dragonite. He wants to finish a, an Assault Kuros, but still going to be a little bit before that'll be the case. I guess he has the plate mail, at least. Yeah, that'll no. That'll be nice. Pain is playing f fantastically. Like, they're... The Sand King's all over the place, even though he got solo Black Hole. I mean, he made him use that. Still in action as his Lincoln, so... No blink stun initiations from this DK, I think is why he bought this. But uh, Terrorblade's huge. Puck has all the right items. Bane's able to get a full channeled ultimate most of the time, despite lots of stuns coming out. Actually, that last one was cancelled really quickly by the clock, but... Um, also, they have the Pack Leader's Aura, Doom. So that... He's standing close to this uh, Terrorblade, he's gonna hit like a truck. <coughs> extra 30% oh, yeah. damage. Rip the speed aura that he had. Yeah, this one's much better. This one's much better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's that's debatable. Come on now. We'll talk about it later though. Well, Blink stun. Aggressively curl strike. Tavo. That should oh, be at least like a free dead. kill. Well, Matt is Start lingering away. around. He gets actually yeah. used up. Has BKB. He, that was... Oh no. Now he's doomed as he BKBs. This is just Flutter. so awkward right now. The Dream Quill was committed in the back lines, but DK's dead. There's no chance. Yeah, That's... you could tell. They, they were on different pages. Part of them wanted to go in, and they also catch the CK. No, Chaos Knight is getting caught. They're just falling to pieces right now. Pain Gaming is running after them, and he will be saved thanks to Jerax and his best efforts right there, and the rest get away. But Pain Gaming just capitalizing off what seemed to be mistakes over and over again from OG. Yep, they should have just acknowledged that AA was dead, let him die, and then run away. But uh, the saved your buddy syndrome, as you always say, uh... Unfortunately, a bit uh, DK in the ass there. Now they're going to safely siege this tower. I'm surprised he put his illusion so far away from him so they don't get the meta. <laughs> but uh, anyway, here we go. Buyback from, from this uh, DK. Look at the spread, though. Casey doesn't have a chance to black hole anything. In fact, Tavo, he's going to get away as well with that Yules. He yeah, blinks. Black hole. Got a Burl Strike. He should be fine. Yeah, Yeah, okay. they need to coordinate that better. Like, they, they should already be going on them as the buy buyback comes out. That's ideally what you want, right? And mm -hmm. using a buyback like that and not getting anything out of it, no black hole, no uh, other initiation, no even hook. Um, fortunately, you waste a lot of gold for the for the DK, who was really actually underfarmed anyway, so... I mean, he, he has 1,000 more gold than the position for 5 Doom. Like... <laughs> Roshan just respawned, but they jump Terrorblade. Big kill chance for OG. Can they finish the job? He does have a Sunder. He's going to be slept up, though. Stopping some of that damage. A Fiend's Grip blocking on the Chaos Knight. He got the center off as well. And Chaos Knight made it. There's a block hole that they're perhaps waiting for. Terrorblade Bane is going to fall. And Terrorblade was not cut him. That was an illusion. Never mind. The Terrorblade's over here. <laughs> so he's doing just fine. That black hole actually ended up not being that great. Mad, he is also in trouble. They finish off the Enigma. They're going to take out DK as well. Ends up being a triple kill for HFN. It definitely so, juked me. I'm sure it juked them. <laughs> we went from solo black holing the Sand King to the Bane. This is unfortunately not the way for Vic to victory here for the, Team OG. There, there was the Terrorblade illusion, to be fair. That he might have thought that was the real one. E even if it was the real one, I don't know. Because I don't think anyone else was hitting stuff in there. And I think he would have probably came out suffered. Uh, he's got a lot of HP, too. He's sitting at over 3,000 with Strength Treads. So buyback coming up from the Sand King. Or sorry, from the Enigma. Obviously, he doesn't have black holes. He just used it. This could be another set of racks here for 
Paint Gaming, we're looking at a 20,000 gold lead for, which I think many consider the underdogs. Yes, of course, there are stand-ins, but I still yeah. think even factoring in stand-ins, um, most oh, yeah. people would have expected OG to win this one-handedly. Very nicely played by Paint Gaming. I'm very impressed, particularly with Tavo. I mean, this guy on Sand King, I mean, he, he got so pressured in the first couple of waves, but just destroyed his lane and, and just really playing out of his mind this game. Well, and credit to the team as a whole as well. The captain or whatever made the call, but the, the right. laning phase, you, you you talked about it. They, they put Sand King mid for a reason, and mm -hmm. the matchup definitely paid off for them in the long run. So, oh, the steal, Jerax, can he get it? Can he get it? No, he cannot. He picked up something. No, he did not. Didn't pick up anything. <laughs> But nice, you have to go for those plays. Yeah. There's really no point in not going for that. But doesn't get it. Has no buyback, actually. And that's Aegis and Cheese going the way. Pain. So I, I imagine this gets ended swiftly. Um, MKB picked up now for HFN. Puts his boots in the inventory. But has the Aegis to work with, too. They're going to gonna need a black hole on literally all five, I think. Easy. Is his up hard challenge. Oh. Fantastic. Oh, they see him, and Black Hole's not ready for another eight seconds. This is awkward, it really is. Duster, Brain Tap, Fiend's Grip, kill the CK. Epic Center in the back lines. DK is forced to use the BKP as well as the other Dragon for him. He's just not taking it up there. It's a good Black Hole. Yeah. Unfortunately, no follow-up damage. He's gonna end up falling after the fact, and that's gonna do it. Pain Gaming will take game number one. You know what I learned today so far, Trauf, is that you're well, right. Terrorblade's a pretty good hero. <laughs> I just never see this hero lose. I, I also think HFN's a, a fantastic core player.